Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Frontliners who refuse the vaccine get the boot. Also tonight, expect the lines at the banks and post office to be long because the money is out. And Sinemai Airport will receive a huge chunk of money. We have the details. In sports, first place in the M League was on the line. Who would step up? Stay with us. These stories and more are next. There you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. A meal replacement smoothie is a great way to keep your fitness goals on track during the holiday season and they taste great, fast and easy. The December smoothie of the month is Minty Java Chocolate Chip and it's just $5. Check out the Shake Cafe Gold's Gym Caravan. Off a day to the WAMI and good evening Commonwealth. Today is Monday, April 12, 2021. The firefighters who refuse to take the COVID-19 vaccine are officially terminated. It started off with 23 individuals from the Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services who refused to take the COVID-19 vaccine. According to Fire Chief Dennis Mendiola, that number has dropped and the disciplinary action is final. Now we're down to nine, uh, you know. Unfortunately, the nine refused to take the vaccine, so we went ahead and served the termination effective today. Mindiola states some of the firefighters have been working for the department for over 10 years, and the decision is nothing personal. Some of them are great firefighters, but again, an order is an order. Violating the governor's directive is the same as violating a judge's directive, you know, or a judge's order. Losing nine individuals seriously affects the department's manpower. Currently, we're already stretched out thin. So what we did was we deployed personnel from Rhode and to, uh, to augment um, to augment the shortage. But um, we're going to launch an emergency academy and hopefully we can just fill these positions as soon as possible. Mindiola says this is an unfortunate situation, but keeping the community safe is the department's priority. A lot of them are citing that, you know, the vaccine, even with the vaccine, you may or may not uh, contract COVID. But as I stated in my previous statement, that any, any percentage, any margin of positive percentage for you know, not contract, uh, contracting COVID is better than nothing to us. It's a solution at the end of the day. If it gives me a better chance to fight COVID, then I'm going to take this and I'm going to stand firm on that. The third round of stimulus checks get distributed this week. Finance Secretary David Atalik says he received notification of the approved funding for the third round of stimulus over the weekend. Real early Saturday morning, um, I received an email actually shortly after midnight from IRS that they approved our plan and that they were going to be working the transfer of $85 million, which was confirmed around 8 a.m. on Saturday morning 
uh, Bank of Guam notified me that they did receive the $85 million and that um, uh, that was pretty exciting news. Right away, staff from the Division of Tax and Revenue, Treasury, and IT Department began working on the printing of checks and reviewing direct deposit accounts. As soon as we heard the news in that morning, we, I, you know, here at Finance, I called in the staff to come in and prepare, um, uh, the prepare all the checks and the uh, prepare the uh, batches to make sure that the direct deposit batches were all cleared and clean and ready to go, so that uh, first thing that um, Monday morning we could send them send the funds out. At Alex states, 21,000 paper checks have been printed and delivered as of this morning. As for direct deposit, 10,500 claimants are expected to receive the funds in their accounts within the next 48 hours. As of noon, uh, we've received uh, notification from several taxpayers that the money did hit their Bank of Guam account. So that's great news. Um, other banks should be expecting it um, the next uh, 24 to 48 hours, depending on the bank and how soon they input the, the, the transfer from Bank of Guam, who is our host bank. Atelic states over $66 million worth of stimulus funds have been processed over the weekend. The next batches will come as people submit their 2020 tax return. So we'll process uh, uh, batches on a weekly basis for those that have not received. And for those that have not received, I'd like to remind um, these taxpayers to either contact uh, our Division of Revenue and Taxation to ensure that they um, uh, all their tax uh, documents are, in, are cleared. And so we expect that there's uh, several taxpayers that uh, needs to either submit more documents or update their, their information. DOF is staying busy as they handle all federal funds coming in. At Select States, they could use a little more staffing. In terms of staffing, we were, um, uh, we were fortunate that we were able to recall a lot of those that were furloughed to assist us uh, and so they've been tasked to help uh, prepare for the stimulus. Uh, we are also anticipating uh, the opportunity to um, hire more people to assist us um, with the upcoming uh, tax deadline, as well as the anticipated uh, advanced child tax credit uh, checks that will be coming somewhere, sometime around July. Interested individuals are encouraged to keep an eye out for announcements on the vacancies. Still speaking with Finance Secretary, here is an update on the Lost Wages Assistance Program. The uh, Department of Labor has submitted the names of those that are recipients of the LWA, um, and we've submitted this request to FEMA to draw down the funds. We anticipate the funds to be in um, either today or tomorrow. And so as soon as these processing uh, the LWA checks, as well as those that are on direct deposits to their accounts. Atelic states he hopes to distribute the funds by the end of the week. A U.S. Army medical professional who came to Saipan for a mission tests positive for COVID-19. A few weeks ago, a team of 12 U.S. Army professionals arrived on Saipan to begin administering COVID-19 vaccines to members of the community. On April 6, a member of their team tested positive for COVID-19 following fifth-day testing by the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. This individual was safely placed into isolation. The soldier, who has not experienced any symptoms, was fully vaccinated for COVID-19 and received a negative result before departing Hawaii. No additional cases have been identified among the 12-member U.S. Army medical team. They will be departing the CNMI soon and will be reassigned for potential mission support on Guam. The soldier who was tested positive will leave Saipan upon completion of the required isolation period. The Commonwealth Ports Authority is to receive seven grants amounting to over $5 million. The Coronavirus Relief and Response Supplemental Appropriations Act will provide over $5.8 million to the Commonwealth Ports Authority. The seven grants are intended to provide economic relief to the CNMI airports and will help CPA meet other financial obligations such as revenue loss. 
Four grants will be awarded to the Saipan International Airport, Spagan Airstrip, Tinian Airport, and the Benjamin Tysak and Manglonia Airport on Rota. Those grants will cover costs related to operations, personnel, cleaning, sanitization, janitorial services, debt service payments, and the combat against COVID-19. The other three grants will provide economic relief from rent, on-airport car rental, airport parking, and in-terminal concessions. Those grants will go to Saipan, Tinian, and Rota airports. Coming up, the fire department shares some tips for this hot, hot weather. Stay tuned. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. We're one of eight U.S. regional fishery councils established under the Magnus and Stevens Act. The council uses the best available science and local knowledge to develop fishery management plans for over 1.7 million square miles of our productive Pacific waters. We work with local scientists and managers to develop an app that captures detailed fishery data. Accurate cast data from the fishing community are needed to sustain fish populations. Take a proactive role in fishery management. The power of data is in our hands. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Marianas Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Marianas Trekking, Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. The Tan Su Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise, and good nutrition. Short-term daytime promo on sale now. Just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. It's been pretty hot here lately in the Sinai, which means it's wildfire season. The Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services shares some tips for the community regarding any unplanned, unwanted, and uncontrolled fires. DFEM's Public Information Officer, Robert Mojica. So with, with the upcoming dry season, we want to try and encourage the community to, as much as they possibly can, get rid of any debris, any leaves, twigs, branches that's um, dead, just get away from the house as much as possible. Get rid of it so that in the event there might be a, a wildland fire, you know, it's less it's less fuel to you know to reach the people's houses and stuff. Mojica states the dry season came a little early this year. Our normal dry season is like from the summertime to around November, and then but now it's we're in April right now, and I heard. One of the wildland guys was saying that dry season actually came in March. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's it game super early this year. In order to contain the spread of flames, firefighters must undergo training. The training is exercised by the wildland strike team and the forestry division. It's a long process. Um, what they want to do is if they take the pack test, it's the three miles um, timed uh, trot, if you will. And um, once they pass that, they have uh, about a week long of forestry training. And then if they end up having like a wildland fire here, we go. They send, we send the guys out. They take care of it. They contain it, you know, as much as they can to the best of their ability. 
and then you know we try and prepare every year for the next one that it comes training is supposed to be conducted annually but since COVID hit the scene of my it has been postponed the department reports a number of 657 fires in the past year 45 of them being wildland fires the most recent and largest wildfire of the year occurred in march up on capitol hill on Guam, Lieutenant Governor Tenoro receives the COVID-19 vaccine and encourages the community to take theirs as well. KUAM reports. Half a day CNMI, I'm Tyler Matinani. Here's what's making news on Guam. We took a trip to the UOG vaccination clinic to catch up with Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio as he received his second dose of the COVID vaccine Friday. It's very relieving. Uh, but it's, uh, I'm more excited to see all the people around me that are choosing to get vaccinated. And uh, I think that we're keeping up with the demand. And with May 1st coming up in just a bit, Tenorio gave us an update of where we stand on the path to half. I think that we're already at 27%, uh, I think, fully vaccinated. And first shots were already uh, going, I think, uh, more than 45%. So... I think things are looking good. There's a smooth operation. I know Mon I think it was Tuesday, um, there was some long lines, some people, uh, more people came, but I think the guard made some adjustments and they're definitely able to handle, I think they're able to handle 2,000 people a day. So I think it's great. Sitting in a packed vaccination clinic, Tenorio says he's glad more people are joining the vaccination. It is a choice, right? But I think with more and more people seeing uh, more and more of their friends and family members getting vaccinated. I think they're encouraged. They're, I, I see a change and I see people being interested in getting vaccinated. And I'm hoping that spirit is going to extend to everybody. There will be some that will be re that might not want to, but I think as we go on, this is going to be the key to uh, saving our island. Administering the dose to Lieutenant Governor Tenorio was Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. Palau is the first country in the region to reopen its tourism industry. They have set up a travel bubble with Taiwan, which has seen the arrival of two flights with a couple hundred visitors. Speaking about economic recovery during a sustainable environmental environment forum at the University of Guam, Palau President Saranga Whips Jr. says it wasn't easy, but they were able to build confidence in now Taiwan that Palau was truly COVID-free. Allow for three days and it costs three thousand dollars because of all this these requirements that we have so the next step is how do we make it more efficient how do we make the experience more pleasant and how do we really entice more visitors to come to Palau to get our economy back president whip said they established a sterile corridor by requiring that arrival arriving passengers take a pcr test at the airport instead of just 72 hours before departure Governor Leon Guerrero and the Guam Visitors Bureau are expected to travel to Taiwan to set up a similar travel bubble. Stay informed 24-7 by checking out KUAM.com or downloading the KUAM News app available for iOS or Android. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matinani. Right, thank you for that. All right, coming up in the KSPN2 Sports Report, the 17th Mahi Derby sees plenty of Mahi, but, well, nothing to brag about. Entertainment lets you do TV your way with Docomo Pacific D TV Plus. Watch your favorite live and local channels, stream movies and shows on TV, on your phone, and on your tablet, right from your Docomo Pacific Wi Fi. No more wires, no more cable boxes, now with the best price. Do TV your way with Docomo Pacific D TV Plus. Jose and Pedro were born on the very same day. 
Jose liked to play sports. Pedro liked to play video games. Jose's favorite word was pass, pass me the ball. Pedro's favorite word was pass too, pass me the rice. Jose is retired and has both time and energy. His life is just beginning. Pedro has diabetes, hypertension, and gout. His life could soon end. Eat less, play more, live longer. Brought to you by PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. Did you know Sienemai's coral reefs and seagrass ecosystems are worth about $115 million a year? Coral reefs alone are valued over $100 million a year. All the more reason these precious ecosystems must continue to be protected. Coral reefs are important to the people of the Sienemai because they provide traditional and subsistence uses, production of commercial food products, recreational opportunities for a healthy tourist economy, and physical protection from storms. Do not break or collect coral to take home with you. We need them. Corals are living animals, and it takes decades to create reef structures. Planting trees, grass, and shrubs on bare soil helps prevent sediment from entering our oceans. Trees also help fight climate change. Use a rain barrel and collect water from roofs, yards, and paved surfaces. You can help keep storm water on your property and pollutants out of waterways by building a rain garden. The ocean floor isn't a dance floor. Stepping on corals can break them. Maintain buoyancy when snorkeling or diving. Nutrients from excess fertilizer increases algae growth that blocks sunlight to corals. Coral reefs need clean, clear water to survive. Help keep our beaches litter-free. Always take out your own trash and a little bit more. Anchor in sandy areas away from coral and seagrass or use mooring buoys so the anchor and chain do not drag on nearby corals. Reduce, reuse, rethink, repair, refuse, recycle. Do not feed the fish. Do not take or step on coral. Do not collect shells. Do not fish. Help with local tree planting community events local beach cleanups, and get involved in protecting your watershed. Participate in training or education programs that focus on reef ecology. You can make a difference. Please contact Mina to get involved in community conservation. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Goat's Gym, and today we're going to be going over the leg press. Now I have here with me is Vince, and he's going to show you how to execute it properly in two different ways. A common mistake that you'll often see is leaving your hands free, either up here or on your lap. I strongly recommend you holding onto the sled and create that tension in the upper body, which then allows you to create more range of motion. So with his current uh, foot placement, he was feeling it on his legs, his quads. Now with a simple adjustment by placing his foot a little higher on the platform and his toes pointed out slightly, he's going to transfer that tension which was previously on his legs onto his hamstrings and glutes. Again, he's going to grab onto the sled, creating that bracing effect up here. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports fans. Sports fans, while a lot of you got stimulated today, others got stimulated on Saturday at the 17th Mahi Derby. 59 boats. Yeah, fantastic. I think uh, 
one of the year we may have had a little bit more 61 62 but this is definitely up there 59 boats and more importantly we had 225 participants out in the water today amongst those 59 boats any girls oh, plenty plenty a lot of them captains as well Saipan Fishermen's Association President Tony Scraggs glad that this tournament was able to keep its consecutive streak going at 17. There were no record breakers on Saturday, but most boats brought home something. The 10-7, captained by Alvin Iglesias, was the winner of the $2,000 prize with an 18.9 pounder. He left early to attend a wedding, so we didn't interview him. We do have him in the past. We're probably going to show that on Wednesday. In fact, we're going to have a complete Mahi Derby a recap on Wednesday night show. It's going to give you something to look forward to. All right, our game of the week is also game of the year so far in the M League. It was a Friday night special under the lights. The top two teams squaring off with the possible championship on the line since there are no playoffs. A hard rain in the first half could not dampen the spirit of this game nor affect the turf, just the parking lot and bare feet. The physical affair turned chippy at times. Both teams wanting it. THFC in green with an unblemished record needed only a draw to stay ahead of the U18 Team A, which had no losses but one tie. Second half, the teens threatening Kotaro Goto. Oh, just a little bit too left. On Tan Holdings' next possession, Martin Jambor shoots. Merrick Tovis knocks the ball away, and the defense clears. Martin could be a good gymnast, too, you know, maybe, probably. Jacob Montez Sabino with the long shot. Tovis comes out of the box. Nothing to see here, folks. Move on. Midway through the second half, still nil-nil. John Bohr with the corner kick. Tovis gets whistled for coming off the line. That's a no-no. THFC gets the penalty kick. Martin will take it. Tovis guesses correctly. The ball bounces free. Martin, another shot. Oh, Tovis makes the save but pays the price. However, there was another infraction in the box called on Team A. So they do it again. Martin with the blast. Again, Merrick guesses right and makes the play. Those are all-star highlights right there, back to back. <laughs> Time becoming more crucial, less opportunities, but still no scores. <laughs> A steal gives Caden Church a shot. It clears the goalie and finds the back of the net. If the U18s could hold on to their lead, they'd move into first place. Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah! yeah! <laughs> Ronaldo Canada with the twisting shot. Oh, too much twisty. Final minutes, these teams going full bore. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Kotaro shopping for insurance. Jason Kimson says, sorry, we're closed for business. Try another day. Trouble on the north side. Tovis comes out. John Board goes in. And it was 1-1. Tan Holdings back in first place. For the lead. That corner kick. Tovis swats it over the crossbar. Neither team able to grab the lead, just jerseys. The game ended in a 1 1 tie. Team A unable to move into first. What a game that was. Yeah. How would you describe it? It's pretty good. Sad we didn't win, but whatever. We'll get it next time. Hard time scoring in the first half. What opened it up in the second? I don't know when our player got a red card and our team was down. We come back with Pretty much, yeah. The U18 national team is coached by Michitero Mita, who is playing for the other side on this match. Game goes. Yeah, I'm happy how the boys play. So, then, uh, special second half. It was very difficult, difficult for us. So, they keep practicing together. Then, uh, yes, they're younger kids, younger boys. But, so, they try to win the game, to do the best. Yeah, I'm very proud of them. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! 
Go-karts, off-roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go-kart track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Hours 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Golfers, come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735. Today's high was 90, the low 81, humidity 63%. Tomorrow, partly sunny, isolated showers, east winds 10 to 20, high 90, low 80, seas 4 to 6 feet, sunrise 4 past 6, uh, high tide 8.30 in the morning, on a low tide at 2.57 in the afternoon, sunset at 6.31. And that's your new sports and weather on this beautiful Monday here in the CNY. Thank you for watching KSPN 2, and hopefully we'll see you back here on Wednesday evening.